another game that you would think I would have covered on this channel a long time ago, and that is Pac-Man. But it's one that has sat on my list, and granted everyone has covered this game, but I figured I would give my thoughts. Now, I did a Pac-Man video in 2013, but it was part of the Modern Gamer Fanboy Review series I did with that whole character I made up named Modern Gamer Sam, which those videos actually pissed people off, and they took it very serious. And granted, I haven't done one since 2019, and I think that was with Apex Legends. I do kind of miss doing those, they were fun. Maybe one day I'll bring that sad sack of shit Modern Gamer Sam back. But last I heard, his mother beat the shit out of him for playing too much Gears of War and eating paste. So let's get on with this review of Pac-Man. As you know, Pac-Man is one of the biggest video game characters of all time. Very influential and is a very popular and well-known character. Developed and published by Namco, although if I recall Midway was also involved with the publishing in North America, it was originally released in 1980 and released in arcades across the world. It has been released on many consoles and home computers and even some handhelds over time. Matter of fact, the list is quite massive, about as massive as Amberlynn Reed. She's fucking massive too. Pac-Man has been ported to the Apple II, Atari 2600, Atari 5200, Atari 8-bit, Commodore 64, FM7, Game Boy, Game Gear, Intellivision, MSX, Neo Geo Pocket Color, NES, Palm OS, PC 6001, PC 88, PC 98, PC Booter, Sharp MZ80B, 2000, 2500, Sharp MZ80K, 700, 800, and 1500, Sharp Zarius, Sharp X1, the TI-99 4A, Commodore VIC-20, PC, ZX Spectrum, and has even been released on the modern consoles like the Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Wii U, Nintendo Switch, and if I recall, it even had a release on the Nintendo Wii and has been part of compilations and all that crazy shit. Hell, you can find this yellow fucker on cell phones as far back as flip phones. In this review, I'm going to cover the arcade version and then the NES and Atari 2600 ports. Although I do want to mention, I played this game a lot on the Game Boy as I had a cousin who had one and she let me borrow it when I let her borrow NES games like Super Mario Bros. 3 and Yoshi. So let's get this started with the arcade version. Man, I remember as a kid, I'd play the shit out of this at arcades. And there was a pizza place in town that had about 12 arcade cabinets, and every once in a while, when we would order pizza from there, I'd go and play a little bit. Granted, I wasn't the greatest at it, but goddamn was it fun. The game is very simple to understand. You play a yellow dot muncher named Pac-Man, and you work your way around a maze, eating various dots or pellets, and of course fruit, for points. The goal is to continue as far as you can and get a high score. You will have to watch out for some ghosts, four of them to be exact, and they are Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde. One touch from these ghost bastards and you die. Of course, you can chase after them if you collect power pills located in the maze. The ghosts all turn blue and you can eat them for bonus points. And this will only last for a limited amount of time and the ghosts will float back into the center box and regenerate if you touch them when they're blue. If you survive a few rounds, you get a Pac-Man intermission doing some goofy funny shit with ghosts. And funny enough, this game development started around 1979 and it was directed by Toro Iwatani. He had a nine-man team and he wanted to create a game appealing to women as well as men. See women? There were games for you as far back as 1980, and to say video games are just for men or pandering to men, you fucking idiots. The inspiration for Pac-Man was the image of a pizza with a slice removed. The original Japanese title was Puck-Man, and it derived from a character that was shaped like a hockey puck. But the title was changed, and one of the reasons I heard was because they didn't want people to say Fuck-Man. Although there is a knockoff game, or should I say a clone, titled Puck-Man, and it's actually pretty damn cool. The graphics for the arcade version of Pac-Man are pretty good for its time. Quite basic, you have a maze and the pellets that Pac-Man will gobble up, and of course Pac-Man, the ghosts, the game runs really well, there is no slowdowns, glitches, or anything like that. Nice black background, very well done for a game in the early 80s. When it comes to the music, there really isn't any other than the cutscenes and whatnot. Most of it is the sound effects when eating the pellets and moving around and all that cool shit, but I like it. I find it to be some of the most well-known sound effects in gaming, even when you die. I think that little sound effect is badass. Maybe one day when I die, that sound will play. The controls are so damn simple, which I'm sure that's what they were aiming for. Back in the day of the arcade, you just use the joystick and move around, no jumping, not hitting other buttons. You can play this game basically one-handed while eating a slice of pizza, drinking a cold Pepsi, a cold beer, a Crown and Coke, or even finger-fucking a high-dollar prostitute. It's that fucking simple. The controls handle great, really can't see anything bad here at all. Pac-Man is a classic. You know it, I know it, everyone knows it. Sure, it might be pointless to do this review because we all know Pac-Man, but I thought, fuck it, why not? I enjoy the hell out of the game. I always come back to it from time to time. Great graphics for its time, great sound effects, easy controls. Definitely cool to see this game get tougher the farther you go. One of my favorite classic arcade games from the 1980s. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
Now let's jump over to the NES port of Pac-Man. There is actually two versions of this game, but they're basically the same. The Famicom version was developed and published by Namco and was released in 1984. The game was then released by Tengen, or Tengen, however you want to say it, for the NES around 1987 or 1988. Now let's get right into the graphics, sound effects, and of course the controls. The graphics for the NES port are pretty good and look great. The game obviously has a similar layout of the maze as the arcade version. I like the colors. They're a little brighter here and the resolution is a bit more. There is no glitching during gameplay, but I did notice on the title screen it did have a little bit of glitching. I don't know if that's the emulator doing it, but you never know. The game runs pretty smooth. Nothing to say bad here. The sound effects are great. Sounds good. And it's going throughout the game. No music. And the controls, once again, handle pretty damn good. You just move around with a D-pad on the NES controller and they respond very well, which they should. I mean, if this game had shit controls, I'd be so fucking pissed off. Pac-Man for the NES is a damn good port. The game looks great, plays very well, the sound effects are awesome. Really, they can't fuck up Pac-Man. Then you have the Atari 2600 port. This game does have some differences compared to the arcade version and the NES port. Obviously, the game was developed by Namco and published by Atari. It was released on the 2600 in 1982. The gameplay is basically the same, but there are some key differences. The maze design is different. The scoring system, instead of going by 10, goes by 1. The ghosts always come out of the center box all at once, rather than one at a time, and they do not have different personalities. The dots are changed into dashes, and the escape route is at the top and bottom rather than the side. Now, when it comes to the graphics, let's face it, the Atari 2600 wasn't good, but in 1982, some thought it was amazing, and rightfully so. And with the limitations, this is what you get. The colors are dull, but it is what it is. The game uses a flicker effect that allows more sprites on the screen, although this can make it tough to play if it's not on the original Atari 2600 hardware, as the flickering isn't handled well. As you can see on this emulator, it's not too bad, but there still is some flickering all over. That could be the emulator itself, and to be honest, I don't think this game is that bad when it comes to the graphics. With the sound effects, I think they're alright, nothing special, not as good as the ones on the arcade or the NES port, but could be worse. Could have none at all. The controls, not the greatest. Obviously, with the Atari 2600, you are moving around with a joystick, but they are a bit off at responding, and this can be frustrating in a game like this. Now, have I played worse? You're damn right. Is this playable? Yes, but I wish they were a little better. The Atari 2600 port of Pac-Man is all right at best, and basically what this console can handle, I think the hate it receives is a bit ridiculous, although yes, I take the NES port over this any day. It's not a complete shit bomb. The graphics for what they are, decent, the sound effects are alright, and while the controls are not the greatest, it is at least playable. Pac-Man is a legendary video game character and went on to spark a lot of games of different varieties, an animated television series in the early 80s and even later on. There's been CDs released of music, there are shirts, toys, bicycles, breakfast cereals, popsicles, candy, and more. There's been knockoff games, flash games, I mean the list goes on. If you want to play this game for yourself, it has been released on modern consoles and PC in numerous ways. There are compilations out there, Then, like I said earlier, the game is on the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, it has an arcade one-up release. If you want an actual arcade cabinet, there is one for $3,459, $350, $400, dollars and that's definitely expensive, but they are out there. The NES port ranges from $0.99, cents, $9.47, $5.50, $20, $1.25, $8.30, $20, $20, and really the prices are pretty cheap. The Atari 2600 port is 9% rare. Prices range from $8.99, $1.25, $20, $29.99 for a complete in-box, $3.99, $9.95, and prices in between, which is also not bad at all. When it comes to sequels, spinoffs, and all that type of shit, there is a shitload of them across many different consoles, handhelds, computer, and so on, all the way up to modern time. Some of the games are Baby Pac-Man, Pac-Man Plus, Super Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, who's a ball-guzzling whore, Junior Pac-Man, Pac-Clan, Pac-Mania, Pac-In-Time, Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures, Pac-Man Adventures in Time, Pac-Man World, Pac-Man World 2, Pac-Man World 3, Pac-Man World Rally, Pac-Man Kart Rally 3D, Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, Pac-Man 256, Pac-Man Championship Edition, and there was even a sequel to that. In the latest release, Pac-Man 99, which is on the Nintendo Switch. I don't ever see Pac-Man going away, and I'm sure there will be some more games probably way past my time. I hope you enjoyed this review of Pac-Man for the arcade, and of course the NES and Atari 2600 ports. Thank you for watching, you motherfuckers kick ass.